The HP Spectre X360 is a feature-filled laptop great for photo editing and will fulfill your needs in a variety of design applications such as the Adobe Design Suite, Figma, Sketch, Affinity, and more. But with a number of options available to you such as the screen quality and internal components, which is the right laptop for your use case? Let's get rocking! If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. And if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Spectre X360, you can head down in the description below anytime in this video and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase for that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. When HP reached out to me about reviewing the HP Spectre X360, I jumped at the opportunity as it is a highly sought after laptop for photo editors, digital artists, and graphic designers. When they asked which one I wanted to review, I said, well, both of them. Now, I did not receive all of the variations of this laptop, but I did request the two most capable in the lineup. The Spectre X360 with a dedicated GPU and 4K OLED screen comes with the Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H with six cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD. And the other model that does not come with a dedicated GPU, but in fact the latest 11th gen Intel i7 processor. This laptop comes with the Intel 11th gen Core i7-1165G7 with four cores and eight threads, the Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. For brevity's sake, in this video, I'm going to be referring to the first model with a dedicated GPU and 10th gen H series i7 processor, the X360, and the 11th gen Intel processor with the latest XE graphics, the XE model. Now, I may in fact reference them as the i7-10750 or the i7-1165G7, but keep in mind the two abbreviated names will also be included as well so you can keep track with me. Kicking things off, let's take a look at the build quality of these two laptops. They are identical twins visually, but have a few differences within the specs as just mentioned, and the screen quality as well, which will affect the color gamut range and color accuracy, and we will get into that in just a minute. They both come in a deep matte gray of CNC machined aluminum, which is sturdy and resolute to the touch. Sometimes even aluminum laptops do not feel quite aluminum due to the thinness of the aluminum. This is not the case with the X3. 360 and the XE. They are solid. One design choice that sets these laptops apart from any other I have seen on the market is the gold beveled edges. They are a work of art. This is one of the most regal laptops I have ever seen, and it is not too overdone. It does not look ostentatious. It is very tasteful. The gold edges are well machined, providing smooth edges to the bezels of this laptop. I love all of the small details on this laptop, the name specter on the hinges, the hidden power button on the corner of the bezel, as well as the USB-C on the other corner. As you pull this laptop out of the box, you will continue to discover little hidden details that were so unnecessary, and that speaks to the level of attention and care that HP put into this specific laptop in their lineup. I'm reviewing two 15 inch models here. So on these models, you will see a vent on the right and left side panels on the top of the keyboard deck, as well as the bottom cover uh, of the keyboard deck as well underneath the laptop. These vents will keep both of the laptops cool and they actually run pretty quiet as well. Now I will mention if you're getting like a 13 inch model, you most likely won't be getting the side vents on either of the side panels, but on the 15s you will. While considering the fans, we might as well take a look at the thermals and noise. The these laptops produce while running a few of the creative apps.
The i7-10750H, which is the X360, at idle had no fan noise. And the XE, which is the i7-1165G7, had no fan noise as well. Now, for web browsing, the i7-10750H had about 32 decibels of noise and same as the 1165G7 model. Depending on what task you're working on in Photoshop, I saw each laptop boost up the fans on occasion, um, reaching for the i7 10750H, 47 decibels, and the 1165 G7, 49 decibels. Concerning the on-the-go capability of these two laptops, they are both exactly the same size, at a thickness of 0.79 inches thick and weighing in at 4.23 pounds. I love how thin and light these two laptops are, especially being so sturdy and well-designed. Concerning the battery life, the X360 will get roughly eight to nine hours of web browsing battery life and about five to six hours of design and video editing battery life out of its 72.9 watt hour battery. Whereas the XE model will get roughly 10 hours of web browsing battery life and about um, eight hours of design and video editing with its 72.9 watt hour battery. Now that is due to, you know, the uh, 10, the i7-10750H having a dedicated GPU and a little bit more bright and powerful screen. Um, so that's where we're seeing kind of some of those differences in the battery life. Watch out because these two laptops come with slightly different ports. The X360 with its i7-10750H is a slightly older laptop from a production standpoint and comes with USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, USB Type C with 10 gigs of transfer, Thunderbolt 3 USB-C with 40 gigs of transfer, an HDMI 2.0 micro SD card reader, mic and headphone jack combo, as well as a webcam kill switch. Whereas the XE model is a little bit newer and comes with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, two Thunderbolt 4 USB-Cs with 40 gigs of transfer, HDMI 2.0 micro SD card reader, mic, headphone jack combo, and web webcam kill switch. Now the big difference obviously is that Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 4 ports. If you order from the HP website, which I have provided links in the description below, then each of these laptops will come with an HP pen. I'm not sure if this is true of every seller, so just make sure that you check details in your order um, when you go to order the laptop, if you order from somewhere else, just to make sure that it does indeed come with the pen. As I open the lid on each of these laptops, I am greeted by a similar but not identical 4K screen. The X360 comes with a 4K OLED screen and the XE comes with a 4K standard. 4K screen, non-OLED version. The X360 with its OLED screen can reach 400 nits at full brightness and has a color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.74. So that's a very color accurate screen and can reach a high gamut range on all levels. The XE with its non-OLED screen can reach 340 nits at full screen brightness and has a color gamut range of 97% sRGB, 77% Adobe RGB and 79% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.37. Now, regarding those two screens, if you're on the HP website, you can upgrade the XE model to get that OLED screen, and that would give you the color accuracy. But for these two models, I have slightly different screens, and obviously they're going to come at slightly different price points. And again, if you're curious what those price points are, um, they do change, so I can't state them on the video, but you can check in the links in the description below. Regarding the screen flex and hinges, the um, they both laptops come with the same hinge configuration which is strong and secure. I like the two wide gold hinges. They are strong when opening the laptop um, to the you know standard laptop position as well as full articulating mode for the drawing position. As you can see, there is nearly zero screen flex. Another thumbs up to HP on the build quality of this laptop. Moving down to the keyboard deck, the keys have good spacing, a comfortable soft touch material on the caps and a firm snappy key press. It is not the quietest keyboard I have ever used, um, but it is quiet. I will provide a noise test here in just a minute so you can check that out. It is a full numpad keyboard, which personally I don't care for, but it's there and it's a good keyboard, so have at it. The backlighting is clear and even across the keys as well. You would think that all companies would have nailed this by now and there would be no need to mention the backlighting, but there have been a handful of laptops I reviewed recently with bad keyboard backlighting and I just wanted to mention that 
this is not the case. It's well lit, has good backlighting. As mentioned, the keyboard is not the most quiet that I have tested, but the trackpad on the other hand is very quiet. It has a firm, smooth press rather than a sharp, clicky press, which to me is, is just right. With great click and touch sensitivity, HP really nailed it on these Spectre X 360s. Okay, I'll pause on geeking out so much so that you can listen for, uh, for me typing and then using the trackpad. Both laptops come with a 720p webcam and manual shutoff switch on the bottom of the laptop chassis as to avoid any uh, pesky cyber spies. Now, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value ever, just ever so gently, just press down that like button and let me know in the comment section how you plan on using either of these laptops or should I say the different variations of the X360. Um, you can drop a comment down below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the future uploads. Now that we have covered the physicalities of these two laptops, let's jump into the performance section to see which one is the best pick for photo editors. As a quick refresher, these two models we are looking at, the Spectre X360 with a dedicated GPU and 4K OLED screen comes with the Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. The other model without the dedicated GPU comes with the 11th Gen Intel i7, 1165 G7, four cores, eight threads, Intel Iris XE integrated graphics, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. Before taking a look at the dedicated Photoshop benchmarks, let's see how these laptops stack up in the simulated benchmarks. As you can see, the new 11th gen Intel processor in the XE model pulls slightly ahead in single core Geekbench scoring, a 1521 over the X360 with its H processor and dedicated GPU scoring a 1292. For multi-core performance, we see the XE take the lead again with a score of 4940 over the X360's 4750. So how is it that a four core, eight thread CPU is beating a six core, 12 thread CPU? I want to know your thoughts, but my research shows that the new 11th gen CPUs come with a smaller 10 nanometer process, making it more efficient. Plus Intel has been working on a lot of AI development on their chips recently, rather than increasing core and thread count to get more performance out of less threads and cores. Now, a lot of people have been trashing Intel for this approach, but it clearly is working to their advantage. Um, the evidence here is the G series processor slightly pulling ahead of one of their flagship H series processors. Um, so take it what you will, complain, celebrate, whatever it might be, but that's what we're seeing here in the simulated benchmarks. Moving on to Cinebench R20, we see once again the XE model beating out the X360 by more than 300 points, the XE scoring 2181 and the X360 scoring 1842. All right, now let's get into the really good stuff. Let's check out the differences in performance inside of Adobe's most intensive design, art, and photo editing tool, Photoshop. I use Photoshop Benchmark to see how well this laptop can handle the most intense intensive tool in Adobe's design suite. If a laptop can handle and perform well in Photoshop, it will handle in design and Illustrator with ease. You can also use this reference uh, if you're considering other design or photography focused software such as Affinity, uh, Photo, Sketch, and Figma. First, we are going to take a look at the individual task completion times for each laptop, and then I will point out the major differences and benefits of each laptop. First up, we have the X E. This has the integrated uh, graphics as well as the 11th gen uh, 1165 G7. As you can see, the only major bottlenecks are going to be the Smart Sharpen as well as saving massive Photoshop files. Some of the minor bottlenecks will be reduced noise, field blur, iris blur, and adaptive wide angle. Also note that the resize to 500 megabytes task took roughly 10 seconds. So keep that in mind when we move on to the next variation of the X360. So now switching over to the dedicated GPU um, with its H series processor, we see that Smart Sharpen becomes a mere minor bottleneck 
But saving a PDF takes roughly 12 seconds longer. An adaptive wide angle becomes a major bottleneck. Other than that, the X360 has nearly identical minor bottlenecks, such as reduced noise, field blur, and iris blur. Now, resizing to 500 megabytes took 10 seconds on the XE, whereas it takes only, uh, about half the time on the X360 at five seconds. So if you're someone who conducts massive photo shoots with tons of files to resize, this could be a big win for you, and you could cut down your workflow by about half by going with the model with the dedicated GPU and the i7-10750H processor. Now, for the overall Puget scores for these two laptops, they're very close. The XE actually pulls ahead by about 20 points, scoring a 623, whereas the X360 snags a 603. Honestly, it was really splitting hairs, and that is why I wanted to pull up the individual task reports for you guys and gals to see um, how each one of these laptops performs on an individual use case level. Now, my recommendation between these two Honestly, regarding the specific use of Photoshop, I don't have a very specific recommendation. The choice really is yours, depending on the task that you normally conduct inside of Photoshop. However, I will point out that if you plan on using this laptop for any video editing or motion design in the future, then I would pick the X360 model with the H-series processor and dedicated GPU, as that will make a big difference when you start to get into video editing in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, as well as After Effects. I actually have filmed a dedicated video about how to choose the right X360 if you're interested in checking that out. For video editing, I'll link it up in the YouTube cards above. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing of either of these models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Remember, if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos about the X360s, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.